Hello and welcome to this video tutorial from computergargar.com. And in this video, we are going to look at how to use the find function in Excel VBA. We are going to see some examples of its application and also explore some of the options that can be used with it. So let's begin with a simple example of the find function in action. And I have this huge list of names on screen from A2 to A7. And I wish to find the name Gita within this list. So if I switch to the visual basic editor and get ourselves started with a sub procedure, which I'm just going to call uh, the find example. And I'm going to begin by declaring a variable as a range object. So the find function is used to find things like this name, and it will it is run from a specified range. So for us, it's going to be range A2 to A7, and it returns the answer as a range. So it actually returns the range object. And we can then find out further information about the returned cell, or also perform some actions based on it. So I'm going to call this variable found item, and it's going to be a range data type. And then I'm going to set that variable as being equal to, and here comes in the range object for A2 to A7, and then the find uh, coming off the back of it. Now there are various options with the find function, and here they all are, look at that for a list. But the only mandatory one is to tell it what you are looking for. Everything else is optional, and we will explore some of those uh, more important ones maybe in this video. But you see we have ones to be able to match case, determine our direction of a search, or even what we're looking in. Are we looking within uh, the value of a cell, what a formula or the comment, and so on. Very similar or the same really as to find feature of Excel depending on how familiar you are with that. Now to tell you what I'm looking for, it's the name Gita, and that is all I need. Let me zoom out of this for one moment. Because now we have that, we want to see what is returned. So it's going to perform a find on Gita and assign it to this range variable. We can now do things to that. So as a demonstration of it working, let me just open up the immediate window. And in here, we will write something to it. So I'll just put debug.print. And then from there, I'm going to put found item, our variable, dot address. So what is the address of what was returned? Now, if I just switch back to Excel for one moment, here we go, Gita is in A5. Back in we go, and let's press my run button to run this macro. And at the bottom in the immediate window, we can see it has returned range A5, because that is where Gita is. But I can return any information about this. I could find out what row it's in. What is the row of what you found? If I play that and look towards the bottom of the screen, it's in row five. Or if I just left that out, it will be the default uh, property of a range object, which is the value. So when I look down the bottom, it's just going to say Gita. So it's the same what I looked for because that is the value of that cell. So that is our first example of the find function at finding what we want, returning it to a range object, and then we're able to do things to it. And at the moment, I'm just printing some of the information into the immediate window for the purposes of testing and just seeing how this is working. Now, if you're new to this function, it's probably a good idea for you to set up a list of names or a list of uh, vegetables or something that you can just play around with and test uh, the use of this function uh, and we can kind of learn from that. But let's now go and have a look at another example. 
So what I want to do now is I want to look for a name. I'll use Gita again, but this time I've got these dates in column B. And I would like it to put today's date, which at the time of doing this video is the 27th of March, into the cell adjacent to the name. So it's going to find Gita, and in column B, the column to the right, put today's date in. It's currently 11th, that's going to become the 27th. So switching back to the Visual Basic Editor, I've removed the immediate window, and I've removed the debug.print bit there, so we can focus on what we want. And I just want to do found item, so that's the variable, that's the range object of what was found, and I'm going to offset that zero rows, but one column, and assign to that today's date, which we can just use the date function for. So nice and simple, I'm going to write the function to the column to the right of the found range. Now if you're new to some of this stuff, you don't know what offset is, you've never used a date function before, I will have a link in the description of this video to our Excel VBA course, which, will, which is very comprehensive and is going to cover everything you need. For now, I'm going to run this macro. There it is, it's run. Let me zoom out, minimize the developer, and look at that, the 27th of March is written in the cell next to Gita. So once we've returned that range object, we can start to either find out more information about what we've found, like is it a locked cell, what color is it, what height is the row, or actually perform actions to it, like copy it, delete it, write or read information from other columns of that row. Uh, the, you know, the options are endless and depends on your real world circumstances for it. Now at times you might ask the find function to find something, but it can't. So maybe I ask it to look for the name Paul in this list and there is no pool. So if I switch to the Visual Basic Editor and do that, so I've got the name pool written in my find function here. If I run this macro, I get this error, a runtime error 91. And this is something that is very likely to happen for various uh, real world reasons. And we would like to handle that, because what I do not want is that runtime error. Now when the find function cannot find what it needs, it returns the object to the value of nothing, set to nothing. So that stands to reason that within an if statement, we can test if the range object uh, is nothing, and if it is, take a different course of action. So just after the assignment there, I can put if found item, a variable, is nothing, then, and now we can do something about it. So maybe I'll display a message to the user, just saying that the name could not be found. Something that makes a lot more sense than that uh, runtime error. And then maybe I'll exit the macro because there's no need for it, exit the sub. I can then put in my else statement, but if you do find it, go ahead and put the date in the column to the right. End if. So if the found item is nothing, if you couldn't find it, do something about it. Here it's a message and exit in the sub procedure, but you could do anything you wish, you know, uh, yeah, <laughs> other things. Uh, otherwise go ahead and perform it. If I now run this macro again, then here we go, I get the message that the name could not be found and click an OK, the sub procedure just uh, aborts itself and kind of exits quietly. The find function can do more than just looking for values in a cell. It can also be used to find text within a formula and also within comments as well. So in this example, I have a comment in cell A4 for Stephanie here, and it just simply says completed in it, which you can see on screen. So cell A4, as a reminder, so back into Visual Basic, where I have the code from before, 
What I'm now going to do is up with the find function. I'm going to replace the text pool with completed, which is the text within that comment. And then within the find function, put a comma. So I'm reminded of the various other options that we can play around with, and which I encourage you to do so. And then the one I'm looking at, I'm interested in here is the look in option. So I'm just going to type look in, and when referencing an argument, you put colon equals, and then Excel comments. So we can search within, I say the, the formula, the content of the cell, the value, or the comments. Here I'm going for the comments. Now down below, rather than offsetting and putting a date in there, I'm just going to bring that back and say debug.print the found item address. Just like we did with the first example, and that's going to be A4, if I can remind you of that. Now if I bring back my immediate window so we can see this, and if I run the code, down the bottom we have A4, which is where that comment was. So we've used that to look for comments. Now if I come out of the developer tab, something that is very important to mention is that if I open up the find dialog within Excel, look at this, it's got the word completed in find what and look in says comments. So all we are doing is using the find dialog but we're doing it through VBA. So there's no difference here to how we would do it in usual Excel. The changes from, well it depends what you changed, but most changes that you make from the previous find are going to be still be there when you go and do it again. So please bear that in mind when you're using this in VBA as well, that we've still got the results from the previous find when you're running it. It's very important to bear that in mind so you don't come a, come a cropper with it. Another really useful option when working with the find function is the ability to check only part of a cell, so to perform a partial match. So in this demonstration, I have a list of famous buildings and maybe I want to look for the word Chicago. Now that only forms part of the cell, but we can do that. So in the Visual Basic Editor, I have the code from before and my immediate window at the bottom is empty and Chicago's in cell A7 so that's what we're ultimately looking for. So this time it's still A2 to A7 for a range but instead of completed I want Chicago. Now remember what I mentioned a few moments ago that the results of a previous find is still in the find dialog. So the fact that I looked within comments before, the find dialog in Excel will still be looking in comments. So if I was just to come in here and specify look at, so I want the look at option, colon equals, and then say Excel part, I would need to change comments to values, otherwise it's going to look for Chicago as part of a comment still, because that was the previous search. Even if I deleted that, it still does that. So I'm going to specify values here. So any, any previous finds will be ignored and look in value. And that's some of the benefits of specifying these options as well, so that they overwrite any previously used options that a user may have done. Okay, so if I zoom out and run this macro, down the bottom A7 is returned because Chicago is part of the string in cell A7. So that's another really useful option with find to be able to look for partial matches. You might be familiar with the fact that the find feature of Excel can also be used to find uh, values that are formatted a specific way. 
So, so can the find function. So in this example, I have a list of cities. I have Rome in there twice, but only one of them, the second one, is in a bold format. So in the Visual Basic Editor, I have uh, some of what was left from the previous search. Let me just clear the immediate window. And the Rome that's in bold is in cell A6. So let's change this search to be a search for Rome. And to do the formatting, we have to specify this in separate steps. So in a step before we perform the find, we have to set the formatting. And we do that with the application dot find format property. Now in here we can set the format we want and in this example it's a bold font. So I'm going to put dot font dot bold equals true. But we could be looking for a specific type of border, cell color, uh, font style like italics, whatever it is that we want. Here it's just simply a bold font something that we can all relate to pretty strongly. I'm looking for Rome, but not just any Rome. Let's put in a comma and then use the option called search. Where are you? Format, the last one in the list. Search format, colon equals true. We have to switch it on. So we specify the formatting we want separately and then kind of engage it uh, within the find function. Remember, if I can say it again in this video, that this setting will remain. So when we're performing our find functions, we might have to think about clearing this stuff um, or re resetting it each time that we run uh, this function because our previous searches will remain. Okay, with that done, if I zoom out and run the macro cell A6, is printed to the immediate window uh, for purposes of demonstration and showing that that works. Because of previous find criteria remaining after the find has been done, it can be a good idea to clear this find format property that we set. So when the find function is done again, it's not looking for something that's in bold. To do that, after we perform our actions, which here is just to print to the immediate window, we could simply do application.findFormat again, but this time dot .clear, a method to remove any formatting uh, which was set in this previous step. And that's always a good habit, uh, I think, to get into. I hope you found this video useful on the find function of VBA, and maybe it will help you in some of your future macros. If you enjoyed this video, please check out some of our other videos on our YouTube channel, and come check us out at computergaga.com.